So I finally want to get a video going on this girl here. Uh, did the unboxing, did the just little kind of tone check through it. And let me tell you, uh, there's a lot of hate for no good reason. For instance, I just saw one pop up as I was filming that said, sounds cheap. And I'm like, well, I do budget stuff, but there's nothing about this guitar that sounds cheap. And, you know, if that's the argument you want to make, I don't know, man. These are Seymour Duncan a whole lot of humbuckers. Not a lot of cheap there. But let me tell you about this guitar. So, this is the 2020 Epiphone Les Paul Classic Worn. Okay. Uh, what we have on this bad boy is nickel hardware. All right. Nickel plated on the pickups, obviously, even though they are not the stock pickups. Okay, we have a stop our tail normal. This comes with Grover, Rotomatics, 18 to 1, you know, so good stuff. Got your cream pick card. It came with uh, gold hats. I took those off and put on the more amber ones because I felt like they looked a little more period correct as far as a gold top. Uh, comes with the Epiphone, uh, what's it, the Loctone um, tailpiece and bridge. I did replace the bridge with a um, proper small peg APR, ABR1 from uh, Philadelphia Luthiers. Um, not trying to, I, you know, I've gotten a lot of, you know, I put the proper color switch on there, proper bridge, you know, for the tone and build of the guitar. People are giving me a hard time and some messages, so you know, it's not a Gibson. I know, I'm aware, I've owned Gibsons, I know what they're like, but I can finally say, for an Epiphone, this is the next best thing you're gonna get to a Gibson. I believe that. If you're not talking about a high-end, you know, uh, self-build or, or boutique guitar or something like that. But 
to keep going. You got your regular three-way toggle. Um, it's got the nice metal high, Epiphone uh, heavy-duty jack. I appreciate that very much. I, like I said, changed the knobs out. Uh, it came stock with coil splits, so now I just have better humbuckers with coil splits. Um, I also put the finger bleeders on there just because I, my goal, and I have a, a bell truss rod coming, and I mentioned that. And he's like, oh, you're just trying to make it look like a Gibson. It's like, well, I guess you could say that, but that's not exactly the point. What I like about a gold top, and what I've always liked about a gold top, and the reason I always wanted one is because that's how they look. You know, they, they have a certain thing, a certain aesthetic. And for the first time, thanks to this headstock, Epiphone has finally gotten somewhere in the range where you can look at one of their guitars and say, hey, you know, I'm not dropping three grand on a Gibson, but I can get pretty damn nice facsimile. And that's what it is. I mean, there's legit nothing wrong with this guitar. Uh, you got your nice little veneer on the back there, and I don't feel like they need it to. Looks like it's a two-piece body, and uh, looks like there's a fair amount of nice looking grain going through the body. But for whatever reason, they decided they want to veneer it. You got the nice mahogany neck, and I'm really digging on this because I'm looking at it, and you got the two-piece heel, which I like, because the two-piece heel makes it a little stronger. Your scarf joint, as you would call it, is a little farther up on the neck, um, which is good because this whole neck comes up this way, and the face is scarfed, which is a lot better for me because I feel like uh, the more of one piece of this neck I can get, the happier I am. So you got your Slim Taper C profile, you know, you're, it's, here's what they did. So they took, Epiphones have always, you know, since Gibson decided to let them do it, they always started to have that vibe of the poor man's Gibson. But the problem with Epiphone, for me, in the past is that the poor man's Gibson didn't emulate Gibson's. You know, they had the look, but they didn't have the sound, they didn't have the contours, the feel. They, Gibson made sure that they were slightly different. Well now, with this new inspired by Gibson run that they're doing, they took Gibson specs and put them into Epiphones, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that. You got a 24 and 3 quarter lengths, you know, uh, scale like you normally would, 12 inch radius. Um, this fretboard is Indian Laurel. Uh, I kind of like that it's light because it jives with the lightness of the back. Okay, uh, 22 medium jumbo frets, Graf Tech nut, which I'm a fan of. Um, I like bone, but I probably won't replace it. Um, I'm gonna be honest, the only other plans I have for this guitar right now is uh, I hit Music Lily up and I got a lot of black hardware. <laughs> I don't want to go exactly Bonamassa, but probably something close, you know, with the black pickguard rings. Uh, he doesn't do black knobs, I'm going to. I'll throw up a picture in this video of the, the hardware I'm thinking of putting on, but because I wanted this to be, I don't know, a representation of a gold top that I've wanted, I don't know when I'm ever gonna do that. I mean, I have the stuff to do it, so I will, one day. I'll just get a bug up my butt to do it, but until then, I'm gonna leave her just as she is. Um, this is an incredible guitar. There's a lot of Epiphone haters out there. There's a lot of people, uh, especially Gibson guys. Ah, oh, freaking Epiphone. And that's fine, dude. It doesn't have the Gibson name on the top. But I tell you right now, it's got the Gibson heritage behind it. This is not your, you know, a, lot of, a lot of guys will give you a hard time, the Gibson guys. And I don't mean everybody. I don't want to trigger anybody, but I come in contact being a tech you know, working for big music store chains and stuff. I've come across a lot of people that are, ah, it's all about the Gibson, it's gotta be the Gibson, and that's cool. Love your taste, right? I happen to love Gibsons. And having owned a few and had a lot of trouble with them from the factory for an exorbitant amount of money, I decided to bail, okay? Um, I might get a Gibson one day when I do, another Gibson one day, when I do it'll be an SG, because that's the best bang for your buck, I think, when it comes to the Gibson line. But I'll tell you now, I mean, you're not looking at a full mahogany body. You're looking at a mahogany body with a maple cap, true maple cap. I've been inside these pickup routes, and I don't know if I can get it close enough, but it's got the old school binding, so that if you catch it in the light, you can see the seam where the cap actually meets the body. So you know, proper, proper maple cap. It's uh, it's weight relieved, but not ridiculously. I'm thinking 
somewhere in the late, after the Goodwood era, when they started doing a lighter mahogany with a nine hole. That's what it feels like. I could be wrong. I mean, it could just be a super light Chinese mahogany. But I'll tell you what, it's resonant as hell. I'm getting these guys telling me, oh man, you should just save up and get a Gibson. Save up and get a Gibson. I'm in my 40s. I've been a professional musician for over 20 years. I've had the Gibsons. And I'm not knocking them, but I got a family. You know, I got more important things. When I was young and I was spending all the money in the world on guitars, that was the thing, you know what I mean? Do that, but those guitars got sold so that I could get houses and move and do the things I needed to do. What I want is guitars that are good. And now I look for guitars that are budget and good. This, with the original Alnico Pros, I took those out because the only beef that I've had, really, really beef that I've had with Epiphone over the years is that they get muddy pickups. You know, they, it's a thing. They came out with the Pro Buckers, but Pro Buckers aren't as bad. They have, they have a, a, a cheap burst bucker kind of feel, but to me, looking at the specs of this guitar, what it's made of, how it feels, and how it Now I know you can hear that, and the reason that I know you can hear that is because, again, one of the most resonant guitars I've ever had. I believe that it has to do with the open pour worn finish. So I've been getting a lot of questions since the unboxing, what is the finish? I've done my homework, and if I'm being 100% honest, they don't say. But considering that all the other Epiphones are polyurethane, thick, thick, thick polyurethane, which is another reason Gibson cats don't dig on Epiphones, and that I agree with. It's really hard to feel your guitar when you're working through freaking five millimeters of just poly coat. You know, this, I'm, I'm gonna assume that this is poly, um, but it's satined, and it looks as though it might have been poly sprayed and then wiped down, um, and it doesn't look like they went too hard on the grain filler. Now, you can tell the back and the neck the size, they've been grain filled, but not to the point where you're getting glassy finish. The top, same thing, you know. Um, I love that you can see the grain. This is absolutely a proper maple top. Uh, kind of makes me wish I had two of these so I could sand it down and see what it looks like natural. But the routes in this thing were clean as I've ever seen in an Epiphone. Now, I'm a member of Epiphone groups and I like them, I dig them, you know, but like anybody else, I've felt that they, they have issues, you know what I mean? There was not a lot of QC for a bunch of them, and sometimes it just seemed like they weren't even really trying to emulate a, a Gibson. Now, that's not the same. These guitars are absolutely meant to be a poor man's Gibson the proper way. And, I mean, the list price for this, I don't know if I said it yet. I might have. I'm going to say it again. $449. Now... I ripped the pickups out because I've had lots of experience with the Epiphone Alnico Pros. Uh, they're not bad, but if you, I got a deal on this. So since I got a deal, I was like, you know what? The only upgrade that's ever gonna matter. Let me get a, let me get a set of whole lot of humbuckers, you know? Because I've, as a tech, I've taken Epiphones, especially the studios. Those are my favorite Epiphones. Um, the, they just seem to be less thick with poly. But when you take, I took one of those and I put a set of Seymours in it, just a, a JB Jazz, and it was, it sounded great. It was a whole new guitar. And now this, I feel, is a better constructed, better wood, better made guitar than that. So I was like, you know what? Let's put some good pickups in it. I did, and I've gotten a couple of, a couple of hiccups in my comments, people saying, ah, oh, it could sound better. First of all, I'm not in a studio. I'm in a makeshift video room that if you've noticed, for the first time, I put a sheet up behind me instead of a garage door or a bunch of busted guitars. Okay, this isn't something that I'm doing to be a YouTube star. This is something I'm doing because I really dig talking about guitars, you know, and other gear. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, I did have to block somebody off my channel because all they did was throw up just insult after insult, and I won't have that. You can't come on my comment section and insult me, but even more so, you can't come on and insult other people that are commenting and being, being cool about stuff. That being said, 
This video is about this guitar. It's got the trapezoid inlays, which I have to say, look pretty dang good. Look how they catch that light. I'm not upset with that. Okay. Like I said, Graf Tech Nut, doing a good job up there. That truss rod's gonna get changed just to a blank one, but I want a bell with the two screws instead of the three. Just personal choice. I will never be taking that Epiphone off that freaking headstock, so I won't be trying to fool anybody. That's not my thing. Okay, you got the maple cap, cream binding, and a worn finish. This guitar is a monster. One day, it'll get the, the black makeover with all the music lily stuff, and uh, that'll still be a monster. It'll just look a little darker. So, thanks for checking out my review, if that's what it was, on this, uh, this is my favorite Epiphone, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and let me tell you, I played it up against my, uh, my Japanese Les Paul, it's right in there. It's a different tone. This, this has the sound of, and I, I don't wanna say vintage, but when you've played an old guitar that's been beat in pretty good and it's lost a lot of its finish, you know, the neck isn't so coated anymore, it's almost worn down and stuff like that, they have, to my ear, a more open tone. And that's what you get off of this. You get a good amount of mid-range, it's, you know, the maple cap gives it all the high end you're going to want. And the mahogany keeps it pretty dang warm. And I noticed that the uh, Indian Laurel is not a bad replacement for uh, rosewood. And I say this because it's also a pretty porous wood. But you know how when you have an ebony guitar and you got that beautiful ebony and it's just, it's almost like a, a maple snap. It's so high end. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, I think I, I'm, I'm digging the Indian Laurel, even though it seems like uh, Rosewood's gonna be making the comeback. But. Hey man, 2020 Epiphone Classic Les Paul Worn Gold Top. It's a beast, and it's pretty, and I love her. Uh, if you wanna hate, hate in the comments, just hate respectfully. Thank you for hanging out with me again. This has been Gearing Guitars with Mel. I am Mel. Thank you.